Here we are today at the Hailing Yacht Company and the purpose of our visit here today is to come along and see the Horatia and maybe see if this old engine that's been rebuilt over the last nine months is actually going to fire into life. Okay, so this is John, and what happened here is uh, he has a boat, it's a Nelson, it has twin D336 Cat diesel V8s in it. Now, for those of you that don't know what a 336 is, uh, that's a bigger dinosaur than what I own. But uh, he had it blow an O-ring and it pumped all the oil out in the bilge and destroyed the crankshaft in one of them. So John went all the way to Holland and picked up this one. And this is out of an old uh, 621, 619 cat scraper. Got a gasket kit from an outfit in California. Said it was brand new. It's dated 1969. All the gaskets in it were like dust. Uh, there wasn't a damn thing in it I'd use. I told them they should have just thrown that in the garbage. Anyway, they want me to send it back. I said, I'll save you $20 in freight. I'll just throw it in the garbage. So they're going to get it back. Sell it to somebody else. I wouldn't use it. Okay, John, this is your gasket kit. Brand new, hot off the press. But guess what? So, I knew a guy with connections who could get things from from uh, Federal Mogul. So I asked him if he would call Federal Mogul and see if by chance they would build John a complete hot off the press, a complete overhaul gasket kit. And they said yes. And I believe this gasket kit was about 350 bucks was all. So kudos to Federal Mogul for doing that. Uh, that was just totally awesome. <laughs> There's a front seal in here. There it is, but no wearing. So I'll have to get that from Cat. That was cheap. Seemed like it was $19. And I've been through all this stuff. There's layers and layers here. I do not see a uh, rear seal at all. So I'll get that from Cat and put it in here. Um, Anyway, this stuff's all brand new. Every last bit of it. Looks like you've got the locks, uh, tons of O-rings, your, I assume this is probably your um, valve cover, rocker box cover, cam cover, whatever. Hey, getting ready to box up the gasket kit to go to England. So what I did is I wanted to be able to protect this, so I bought a sheet of quarter inch plywood and I put one on the very bottom and one on the very top to make sure they can't bend anything or destroy this gasket kit so hope you receive it in good order John these are the bearings and uh, the dates on them were I believe 1970 71 those are all the rod bearings and he needed uh, 30 30 thousandths under on his rods, and I was able to find them. Okay, you're probably wondering why in the world he's grinding on a main bearing. Well, I couldn't find him uh, the last uh, crank bearing that he needed, but I could get another thrust uh, crank bearing. So as I was looking at it, I just thought, you know what? If you just cut the thrust ears off of this, it's identical to the regular bearing. So I told him that was our only option, and I went ahead and sent it to him, and this is him cutting her off.
all talked up. Now let's see if the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Ha <laughs> ha, look at that. Failure, you see, it's never an option. £200 on a huge range of large screen TVs. Save up to 40%. Stuff makes you cough, doesn't it? It's better than a wood fire. <coughs> Gaps them full street. <laughs> but, uh, here we are today, and uh, everything's going yellow. Caterpillar antique yellow. That'll do me. I say you've missed a bit. No. Yes. No, 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 tomorrow. John's done two of these rebuilds now. He's rebuilt both those D336s. Ready? Yeah, give it a go. Which is what we were looking for. Mike Smart. Hip hip hooray! Here we are today watching the rebirth of the Nelson Horatio after uh, 17 months of being in the dark. Let's hope the daylight's not too much for it. That's an awesome boat, John. Can't wait to come take a ride in it. Okay, it's uh, bolt refill day. Things are looking thin in the service truck. I do like the cat heads versus the regular normal heads. See, that's a normal bolt head. Uh, see how much taller the cat head is, how much thicker. And it just makes it nicer because the wrench stays on better and saves your knuckles. But I believe you can get these in that same head. I call these farmer washers. <laughs> no offense, Dave, but that's what I call them. I like the cat hard flats. That's a hard flat. That sucker's hard and thick. It doesn't cover a lot of area like the old Fama washer does there. I like them for engine applications and places like that. Tell me what your, where do you get your bolts? Um, I don't want to buy bolts made in China. Hell with that. I want American made bolts. 
So Jake's got the brake pads for the service truck. These were fun to find. But uh, he's headed back to Fleet Pride because there was no hardware kit with this. So they are air freighting, I think, from California out of their own pocket, the hardware kit for these. So we can get the brakes finished. And this is all of our O-rings. And I've got, I think, a plug box up here, uh, electrical connectors, some shrink tube. But I, we have all kinds of cat o-ring kits in here. And uh, it makes it really nice. And then in here we've got our bolts, uh, a three-quarter drive socket set, a whole bunch of uh, cutting-edge hardware bolts. This cabinet, I keep all my awesome liquid wrench stuff, anti-seize. Uh, I keep Big Bertha in here. And just a lot of, some miscellaneous crap. This is the toolbox set up for it. I like this drawer set up. So then on this side, we've got our torch in here. And then this drawer's got the grinder and all the little attachments. We got some welding rod and stuff, funnel, fire extinguisher. And we just, sometimes, you know, we load things up in the summer and then pull them out in the winter. Don't really have much on this side other than a slide hammer. And I think that's a flare kit on the other side. <clears throat> and then this is the the crane access for the controls and everything. I had a wireless on here and it quit working because it would get moisture in on the circuit board. I think it finally fried it. Now this this service truck body is a case co and I gotta be honest with you, I hope they've improved how they build these. Uh, it's just really cheap built. Uh, we built this headache rack up here. We've gotta hang some weld some more hangers on it to be able to hang hoses and stuff but i want to get rid of this compressor and put the other one on be number one because it's guarded number two because it has its own drive motor instead of a belt i really like that so have you ever seen a service truck that worked on itself that's awesome to have a service truck with a crane. You can just run it up there and hold the wheel off the ground while you put new uh, kingpins and bushings in it. We noticed that uh, this uh, right front tire was wearing crazy. And that's usually a pretty good indication that your uh, kingpins are wore out. So this is the old kingpin out of the service truck and you can see how badly wore it was here. Now. We had greased it uh, just a little bit earlier, uh, but I think one of the things that I've discovered after I put those Stemco uh, spiral wound bushings in the Kenworth is if you don't lift the front end up and take the weight off the wheels when you grease it, and then grease it and turn the wheels, and grease it and turn the wheels, you will not get grease down in here where it needs it. Okay, Jake's already got this other side all put together and done, but he's got both wheels off the ground, and when he greased it, he would grease it, turn the wheels, grease it, turn the wheels, and then he really greased it good before he put the pin in the bore. But it just seems like if you want your kingpins to last, You've got to jack the wheels up and get the weight off of them when you grease them. And even in the Stemco directions, I believe that's what it tells you to do. Okay, this is what it tells you. Apply grease until it can be seen between axle and spindle. Then turn spindle and grease again, repeating the process five times. Grease them, turn them, grease them, turn them. So... I know that's a pain in the butt, but this is a bigger pain in the butt. So this is the compressor off the truck, and I have plans for this. This is my shop air compressor, and it's on wheels. It's really cool. We can take this outside and plug it in. I got an outlet out there, but this compressor came from Hill Air Force Base. It was some surplus stuff. 
my brother-in-law gave me this but this is all the bigger the compressor is on here and it's got this little teeny what do we got here um okay that's a one and one half horsepower motor so it takes forever to pump up so my plan is is to put that bigger compressor and a bigger motor on that baby so we got some serious air this compressor is an atlas copco it's actually an auto crane setup it's got a rex roth uh, hydraulic motor on it i called uh, auto crane and i got to talk to eeyore we're going to do a double section pump on the truck one to run the crane one to run the compressor so i need a 10 to 12 gallon per minute pump at 2500 psi for the compressor and i need an eight to nine gallon per minute pump at 2000 psi to run the crane Weld inspector. Hmm. Acceptable. <laughs> Wow, I'm amazed you can do that all in one weld. Okay, somebody was a little worried about that ether can, so I got rid of that ether can. So this is our compressor mount set up right here. Some flat bar with some uh, round bar drilled and tapped for 3 8 thread. And then the compressor body will sit down on that. And the compressor has uh, rubber donuts it's mounted on. But I wish I had the time that I could paint it that pretty cat yellow. Heck, I wish I could paint the whole truck cat yellow. This is the pump out of the service truck. This ran the compressor that was on it and the crane. This is an Eaton pump, uh, standard B mount with a 7.8 shaft, 13 spline. We are going to go to a Vickers dual section pump. And we've got to change the PTO on the truck. This is our hydraulic tank, inch and a half pipe outlet, inch and a half return but we're gonna have to get a bigger filter and fittings for the return now with the dual pumps on it. So three days I should have the parts and we should be going back together. It's a great day today. Love this snow coming down. It's pretty. Means uh, we can keep on going snowmobiling. I haven't even gone once this year yet. I've had to clean the yard here a couple times with the grader now. Try to plow the snow out of the way. 
We're still we still got the service truck in the shop. We're waiting on parts. Uh, Matt took the forklift and got one of the steering cylinders off number two there. For some reason, she has an old timey steering cylinder on it with the old timey packing type seal on the head. And so we got to find a new uh, head to put the newer style seals in. So this is the steering cylinder. And anytime you see one of these old school babies with bolts on it and this retainer, that means it's a packing style head. And so we want to get a newer style head like this one here where it doesn't have that, has the better seals in it. Now they don't make packing anymore. You don't get that. You get an updated seal, but they still don't seal. So we've got a fix that ram and then number one here has a leaky cylinder on the right and a leaky cylinder on the left and right so and I need to do a hitch so this is the power takeoff on the service truck and this power takeoff has 27 gears and 20 gears uh, the transmission is an FS5306A, which is the same as a 5406A. Uh, the 5306 is out of production. So in the specs, it says that the PTO on those transmissions runs 52% of engine RPM. So if I'm running my engine at 1,000 RPM, that means I'm only running 520 to this gear and that ratio is a 1.35, so I'm only going to get 702 RPM at the pump. That's not fast enough. I'd have to wind it up way, way up there. So the guy's going to get me some more gear, but he's telling me he's going to get 117% overdrive. Well, 117% overdrive... Uh, based on the PTO only running 52% of engine speed, is only going to get me 602 uh, RPM at the pump. So I think I already got some pretty fast gears there. So I need somebody that can calculate this stuff. Uh, I just called him and told him what was in it and said, I don't think your gears are going to speed us up. Um we're going to need to do something really different here. So I can't understand Eaton's thinking with these medium duty transmissions because your big ones, uh, your 18 speeds and stuff are like 79% of engine speed. So this letter L here is the gear set in it. According to Chelsea, that should have a 24 and a 35 gear on there uh, which would put this PTO at a 1.45 which would be a little faster but still not fast enough so I don't know how fast a guy can go and I, my understanding is, is once you get up there uh, with running it faster you lose your ability on torque so, I don't know. I'm hoping one of you guys can tell me what to do here. So my other question is, this Cummins has a, a clicker switch on the dash. And you can only make this thing run 1,000 RPM. You can't make it run any faster. So, is there somewhere I can go, somewhere I can buy uh, something different on the electronic side? Because you should be able to make this... Uh, you should be able to dial this engine and make it run maximum RPM, just like stepping on the gas. So I'm sure it's just something in the switch does not allow it to send enough juice to it to raise the RPM. I'm sure one of you guys knows the answer to this. All right, we're going to talk about how to cut a hole in your hydraulic tank and fabricate this here all up. 
So what you want to do is you want to take a tuna fish can and put it on here and then freehand torch this hole out there. But you want to do this after the tank is all bent up and welded together because you're going to want to blow all that West Vaco right in there because nobody gives a shit about West Vaco, so you just blow that stuff in on in there. Then you're going to want to run down to the homer and get you precision grinding wheel. Tell them you want the one that will grind within a thousandth of an inch. That way when you bolt this on and put a gasket on there, you ain't going to need no kind of bubble gum or sealant. Now, if you got some further questions, you're going to want to contact the folks down at the Caseco, and I'll bet they'd send you the tuna fish can and the paper plate what they drew the plans out for this whole setup. This is my old 9. Next week we'll do a little history on that. I'll show you some more pictures of it. But uh, this is November 1994, and we were building a dam, and uh, my dad dumped it off a 15-foot straight up and down high wall onto its top. He's lucky to have survived. You can see what it did to the canopy there. Hey, good Friday afternoon, everybody. I want to talk to you about some of my awesome subscribers. I want to start out with Brian Wise, who's from Bristol, Virginia. Thank you, Brian, for subscribing. John Lasley from Oconto, Wisconsin. Uh, Corey Wilbanks from Ignacio, is it Ignacio, Colorado? Hope I pronounced that right. Uh, Seth Parker from South Carolina. Thank you, Seth. Randy Butcher from Cardington, Ohio. Uh, George, son of a Gunderson. <laughs> George Gunderson from Mount Gilead, Ohio. Thank you for subscribing, George. Uh, Paul Flom, he's from, and this is just how he spelled it, Canada. He's from Canada, eh? Thank you guys for subscribing. I have some of the greatest subscribers ever, and you just got to meet John who owns the boat Horatia. So thanks John for getting a hold of me and, and giving me the opportunity to help you. Um, as far as the store goes, we're working on the pricing, on the shipping. If you live in the United States, the shipping is free. Uh, I just shipped some calendars to Calgary, Canada. It was only $4.83, I think, to do that. I know the web website tries to charge you 30 bucks shipping. Uh, we are trying to correct that right now. Now, when I take a hat and put it in a box, uh, the shipping goes to like, to go to, to, I don't know what it'll be in Canada, but I know when I send it to Australia or the UK, it's about $22 to ship the hat. Uh, so for those of you that have bought stuff from me, just bought one calendar or whatever from UK or Australia, I usually put both of them in there for you. Uh, don't bother buying the decals if you're buying a hat or calendar because I'm going to give them to you for free. Um, so just my way of saying thank you. I don't really make any money on this. It's just my way to give back to you for all the great comments and uh, the valuable information that you share with me. It's really cool to have all these subscribers. Uh, I really want to go see John and take a ride in his boat when it's completely finished. I have a lot of Australian subscribers that would love me to come down. Uh, you go to somebody's homeland and they show you their area. You just can't buy that. I mean, selling the calendars and hats is just my way of saying thank you. I don't make any money off of it. Again, we're working on the shipping deal to get that shipping down and make it reasonable. So uh, I will let you know as soon as that happens. Uh, thank you very much. It's all right. It's all right.